It took oh, almost two years from the time when I started feeling some weird symptoms to the time when I got a solid diagnosis. We had an idea that it was Lyme for a good couple months before we actually got the clear diagnosis, but I was just trying different things and doing different tests for a year and a half, pretty much, before we got it figured out. When I got the phone call, I felt numb. I couldn't tell if I was excited that we finally found something or, you know, finding out that you have something that a lot of people don't recover from is also kind of a hard thing to hear. I've gone through three rounds of IV therapy and some of my immunity markers and everything are already back to normal, which, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm, I don't know why, but I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm just really grateful. I did my first triathlon when I was six years old, and because I was training for the Olympics, we really just had to find the balance of what made me feel good enough to be able to train. My team did know, obviously, that I'd been struggling with some sort of illness. We didn't know what it was. Um, and so there was at least that part of, of the equation that was out in the open, and, and they knew I was taking antibiotics. Um, keeping something so big that was probably important for certain people to know a secret. Um, that, was, that was pretty hard for me. I've been trying to be a part of the Olympic team for almost 10 years, so having achieved that was a really exciting thing. But at the same time, my body was so unpredictable that I was trying to sort of keep that out of my mind and just control what I could control. The one piece of advice my dad told me was to race with dignity. And even though the result was very far from what I know I'm capable of with a healthy body, I left everything I had on the course. I'm still trying to be fully proud of that. It's still something that's kind of hard to accept, is having a goal of yours half achieved. I, I have always wanted an Olympic podium, and I think it's been within my reach at certain points in my career. but. For whatever reason, it just hasn't been meant to happen yet. And just accepting that, yeah, I did everything I could, but I still am waiting to feel 100% proud. When you're dealt a card that's maybe less than ideal, how much your attitude can affect your outcome. I think, especially with Lyme disease, because it affects your brain so much, it's kind of a hard thing to get on top of because even that seems a little bit out of your control. But I actually didn't realize how big of a role the whole aura of the spa and the whole experience can play in your recovery until uh, the day after I found out that I had my disease. The first thing I did was go to the Scandinav just take a day and that's what I used to sort of process everything and unwinding is a really important thing and sometimes it's hard to get yourself into that state in your regular life but having that environment is really valuable but if you can keep your morale up I think a lot can be done and even beyond what maybe medical staff think I think your attitude can play such a huge role that it's really important to think of the positive things that you have and what you're grateful for, and that's something that I did, and it sort of shifts your perspective to feel like that you still have a lot of great in your life, and you don't have to focus on maybe the one thing that's not going the way that you want it to. My name's Kirsten Sweetland, and I'm an Olympic distance triathlete.